Okay, so we're going to do module 4.2 on polynomial long division today. We need to first back up to when we were in fourth grade and we first learned how to do um, some regular long division. So when I'm looking at example one here and we have four being divided into 1,344, I have to ask myself, what number times four gets me close to 13? And that is going to be a three. I then take that three and multiply it times the four to get 12. And then we're going to subtract. So 13 minus 12 is 1, and I'm going to bring down my 4. And I repeat that process over and over again until I run out of numbers. So what times 4 gets me close to 14 is another 3. Gives me 12 again. I'm going to subtract again. I'm going to get 2, and I'm going to bring down that 4. So now what number times 4 gets me to 24? That is going to give me a 6. And 6 times 4 is 24 we get a remainder of zero, okay? So the way that we're gonna write our answers later on in the unit, this says that when we take four times 336, we do get back to our 1,344. That is the process of division, that you have something multiplied is equal to the part under the division sign. So same thing on number two, a number times five that gets me close to 36 is gonna be a seven which gives me 35. I get a one again when I subtract. I bring down my seven. What times five gets me close to 17 is a three. Subtract, I bring down my two. This little one comes down, oops, to there. So I have 21 now and that is gonna be a four, giving me 20. We're gonna subtract again, we get one. So my remainder is one. This time, when we ha write our answer, we're going to have 5 times 734 plus our remainder is going to be equal to the 3,671. Okay, so that same process of finding a number times the 5 or times the 4, um, getting it close to the number underneath the division sign. Attention all students, Susanna, say something. Susanna, say something. So it's going to be the same process when I'm dealing with polynomial long division. Uh, when I do my division, I have x minus 5 is being divided into x cubed minus 4x squared minus 7x plus 10. I'm going to ask myself what times x gets me close to x to the third, or specifically what gives me x to the third. When I multiply by x squared, so now x squared times x gives me x cubed. x squared times the negative 5 gives me negative 5x squared. Like we did before, the next step to make this go away is that we did subtraction. So I am subtracting right here. When I subtract a negative, it becomes positive. So I have x cubed minus x cubed is 0. I have a negative 4x plus 5x squared. It gives me an x squared. I bring down my remaining terms. I do the process again. Something times x to give me x squared is going to give an x. x times x is x squared. x times the minus 5 is negative 5x. Again, I'm going to subtract. I'm going to subtract. A negative and a negative make a positive. So x squared minus x squared is 0. Negative 7x plus the 5x is going to give me negative 2x. Bring down my 10. Last step, uh, what times x gets me negative 2x? Well, that's going to be a negative 2. And when I take the negative 2 and multiply it times negative 5, I get a positive 10. Again, I'm going to change my signs because I am subtracting. So subtracting a negative makes a positive. Subtracting a positive gives me a negative. Negative 2x plus 2x gives me 0 again. 10 minus 10 also gives me 0. When I write my answer this time, I have x minus 5 times x squared plus x minus 2 is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared minus 7x plus 10. On number four, it is the same idea. I have 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 7 divided by the x plus 1. x plus 1 goes out in front. 
I have 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 7. What times x gets me 3x cubed? That's going to be a 3x squared. Again, take the 3x squared and multiply it times both terms out in front. We have 3x cubed plus a 3x squared. I'm going to subtract. I'm going to subtract. We get negative 5x squared. Bring down my other terms. Start the process over again. What times x gets me negative 5x squared? That's a negative 5x. And a negative 5x. Again, change the signs. Change the sign. I get 8x minus 7. Do the process one more time. We have plus 8. I'm going to change the sign. Change the sign. I get negative 15. So this time I have a remainder. Again, when I write my answer, I'm going to have x plus 1 times 3x squared minus 2x squared plus 3x. Um, oops, wrong one. I have x plus 1 times the 3x squared minus 5x plus 8. My remainder goes on the outside, and that is equal to the uh, first part, the 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 7. Okay, so again, it's the repeated process over and over again. What times x gets me whatever term I'm on? And I keep going until I run out of terms. So the degree of this term down here at the bottom has to be less than what you're dividing by. So we have two more examples that are related to problems three and four. When I look at number five, it is asking me to find f of five, given that f of x is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared minus 7x plus 10. That is the same problem that I was dealing with in number three. When I do that, and we have f of five is equal to uh, five cubed minus four x, or four times five squared, minus 7 times 5 plus 10. When I evaluate this using a calculator or uh, just working it out in my head, so as I start to combine like terms, 125 minus 100 is going to give me 25. I need to subtract 35 from that and then add 10. That 25 minus 35 is going to give me a negative 10, and I'm going to add 10 to it to get 0. So I get f of 5 is equal to 0. That means that the factor of x minus 5 is indeed a factor of what I was trying to divide by. So this gave me my it value. Um, it confirms that I got a remainder of 0 up here with the 0 that I got right here, that those two things are the same. The x minus 5 is a factor of the x cubed minus 4x squared minus 7x plus 10. So you are a factor when you come out with a zero remainder. So on this one, when I substitute in negative 1 into my polynomial over here on number 6, I should get a negative 15 because that's what my remainder was in number 4. So when we take f of negative 1 and substitute it in everywhere, When I start evaluating this and I get a negative 3 minus a 2 minus a 3 and minus a 7 gives me a negative 5 minus 3 minus 7 so that's going to give me a negative 8 and a negative 7 gives me negative 15. When I evaluate the polynomial at negative 1 I have a remainder of 15, negative 15 just like I had up here. So evaluating a polynomial at the zero of what you're dividing by. So what makes this zero is the negative one. When I evaluate the original polynomial at that negative one, that gives me my remainder, which is what it's talking about down here in the little box when you talk about your remainder theorem and your factor theorem. So my remainder theorem says that if a polynomial f of x is divided by x minus k, the remainder is r is equal to f of k. So this f of, uh, so the function evaluated 
at evaluated at k gives me the remainder. The factor theorem, the <clears throat> The factor theorem, a polynomial f of x has a factor of x minus k if and only if f of k is equal to 0. So the function on this one evaluated at k gives a remainder of 0. which means which means that um, x minus k is a factor of the polynomial. All right, turning the page over to do some more work with the long division. You have x squared minus x minus 20 is divided by x plus 4. So we're getting our problem set up here. Uh, I need to multiply x times something to get x squared. That's going to give me an x. When I multiply it times the 4, I get 4x. We are subtracting. I need to now multiply the x times a negative 5. We're going to change the signs, change the signs. We get a remainder of 0. So we're writing it as x plus 4 times x minus 5 is equal to our x squared minus x minus 20. Again, that remainder was 0. So we are a factor. So x plus 4 is a factor. And you can prove that again by evaluating your function at what makes that 0, which is going to be a negative 4. So I have 16 plus 4 minus 20. That gives me 0. So again, when I evaluated the function at the negative 4, I did get a 0. Again, meaning that it is a factor. Um, because my remainder was 0. We have x squared plus 7x plus 14 divided by x plus 2. Again, I have x plus 2. And we're going to divide that into x squared plus 7x plus 14. Again, I have x. I have x squared. I have a 2x. Again, we change the signs. We have 5x plus 14. Again, I'm going to add 5 to both, or I'm going to multiply by 5, change the signs, we get a 4. So this time I have x plus 2 times x plus 5, but I have a remainder of 4 to give me that we have x squared, the original, the x squared plus 7x plus 14. Okay, so I have a remainder of 4. So it's not a factor. And we can prove that again by evaluating f of negative 2 into my original equation. So we have 4 minus 14 plus 14. That's going to give us 4. <coughs> Okay. We're going to jump ahead on the next problems. I'm not doing this extra work. I'm just going to be stopping at what the answer is right there. So um, on number 9, it's straightforward like we were just doing. On number 10, we're going to add a 0x because I am missing that 0x term. I have x squared plus 3, uh, but I am missing that x 0x term. So I write it a little bit differently. We have x minus 2. It's being divided by x squared plus 0x plus 3. So I'm going to multiply by x. And then I have a minus 2x. Yeah. Uh, so I am going to subtract, change the signs here, bring down this 3 here. 
I am then going to uh, multiply by everything by the 2. So that 2 times the x gets me back to the 2x that I need this time. I have a minus 4. Subtract. Subtract. Or add, rather. I'm going to add changing the signs. So 2x minus 2x is 0. 3 plus 4 is going to give me 7. So this time when I write my answer, I have the x minus 2. Up top, we have the x plus 2. And our remainder is 7. And then it's equal to what we started with with the x squared plus 3. So to check yourself, if you multiply out the x minus 2 and the x plus 2, it's going to give you x squared minus 4. And then you're going to add 7 to that to get the x squared plus 3. Okay, another different one. When you move on to number 11 over here, this time all the other ones that we've been doing have been a linear factor. So it was x and a number. Right here we have x squared plus 1. And so we have 3x x squared plus 1, 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus a 3x and a minus 2. I need a 3x to get the 3x cubed. And that's going to be a plus 3x over here. We're subtracting, subtracting. I need to bring down this middle term that we didn't use yet. And 3x minus 3x is 0. I bring down this other 2. I now need to do minus 2 to get to the negative 2x squared. And we're going to have a minus 2 there. Minus 2 times the negative, it, we're changing the signs. Gives us a 0. We have x squared plus 1 times 3x minus 2. It's going to be equal to our original function, 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. And that's our final answer down here. Okay. When you're ready, you can turn the page over to page 7. You guys will do number 9 and number 12 in a few minutes. The last part of the lesson is on synthetic division. So we're still dividing in the sense that what we were doing before, but this one involves just using the coefficients. So again, when I'm talking about coefficients, we're talking about the little numbers that are in front of all of our x's. Okay, so we're going to be using those numbers. And then we're going to be using the part that makes this 0. So off to the side, I'm going to start there first. When I set that equal to 0, I get that x is equal to 2. That little 2 is going to go in a box out in front. And then I'm going to write my coefficients. I have 3, leave some space. I have a negative 2. I have a 2, and I have a negative 5. So again, those coefficients are being written down there. Leave some space, draw a line. And then we're going to bring down this 3 and multiply. So 3 times 2 is going to give me 6. Add straight down, I get 4. Go back and multiply. Add straight down. Go back and multiply. Add straight down. Okay. So this looks like a bunch of gobbledygook. It's just some numbers here. But we have done our division. So this was an x cubed function. My answer is now an x squared function. So this is going to be my answer here, and here is my remainder. Okay, so what we have is we have x minus 2, going back to that original part that we were dividing by, times our answer of 3x squared plus 4x plus 10, plus our remainder of 15 is equal to our original function. Okay, so these were the coefficients of our original. We are dividing by the linear factor, reducing our power by 1. So we have x squared, x, our constant, and then our remainder. We're going to do another one of those on 14 here. What makes this part 0 is a negative 3. So negative 3 goes in the box. We have 1, 6, 3, and a negative 8. I bring down the 1, we're going to multiply, we get negative 3, we get 3, we get a negative 9, that gives us a negative 6, we get a positive 18, that gives us 10. So again, I started with a cubic function, this is now my answer for a uh, quadratic. We have our x plus 3 that we divided by, this is now a 1x squared, a positive 3x, a negative 6, and this guy on the end here is my remainder. 
and that is equal to our original function of x cubed plus 6x squared plus 3x minus 8. Do another one of those. So synthetic division. Again, I set this part equal to 0. It's going to give me y is equal to negative 2. It goes in the box. My coefficients. Notice that you're missing y to the third. So I have 1. I have 0y to the third. 2y squared. A negative y. And a positive 5. Draw my line. Bring down my 1. Multiply gives me negative 2. Add straight down. Go back and multiply. Add straight down, go back and multiply. Add straight down, go back and multiply. We get our remainder. So we started with a fourth degree polynomial on this one. Our answer is now a third degree polynomial. I have y plus 2, and then we have y cubed minus 2y squared plus 6y minus 13 is equal to our y to the fourth plus 2y squared minus y plus 5. And 16, we have, um, well, 16, I'll let you guys try it.